hot enough for you. Just to give you some perspective here, that's 26.3 degrees inside with 29% humidity. Uh, first big heat wave of the year. And I've had to power everything off, turn off whichever lights I can, basically do what I can to conserve any cool air that's left in the house. We have one air conditioner, it's a window unit. We are working on central air and central air is still two weeks away from being installed. Do I have any extra air conditioners? I do, one, and it doesn't fit our windows because you know that thing where all these horizontal win uh, windows exist? Horizontal ACs are cheap. Well, I have vertical windows and I'm doing something completely stupid here to try and make a horizontal window air conditioner fit into a vertical window. Let's go outside and before we roast, I'll try and explain to you what I'm doing. Uh-oh, John's up to no good. Yeah, so late 1970s, 1980s horizontal window air conditioner. Huge thing. And like I said, horizontal ACs technically do not fit into vertical standing windows. And vertical standing air conditioners are really expensive. Okay, so we're gonna try and see if we can make this fit in that window somehow. And the first thing to point out with this is that, sure, $20, but there's no vents on the side. There's no vents on the top. There's no vents on the other side. No, the reason I've grabbed this air conditioner here is because any air that enters in on the hot side is from that fan, travels into this ducting. Some of it's split off here to cool off the compressor, but otherwise it's blown out the back again. Meaning you can stuff this into a wall and there's no issue with any venting on the sides here, which makes it even better of a candidate for what I want to do. And that is just make an enclosure which segregates both these sides and has two lengths of hose that run to the window. Now, this may work. I have a feeling though, it isn't going to work. So we're gonna to have to run some tests outside, mind you, but I just wanna see what the load is like when there really is no load and it doesn't have to fight through any sort of tubing. So I'm gonna put that cover there. I'm gonna throw that back on and run it for a couple of minutes. Now we're gonna do some temperature and load tests. And we are up and it's been a couple of minutes. I can't find my regular infrared thermometer. So sure, let's just use the thermal imaging camera to get us a temperature, vaguely. Where are we? There we are. Mm, six degrees. About 8.5. When we get on here, on our inlet air. About 34, sure. And our outlet. Uh, about 46 degrees. 45, 44, depends on where you are. Okay, that seems about right. Now, let's see what our load is like. And to do that, we have this fancy little cheap amp clamp. Now, we should be running about nine amps as our maximum. And if I check there, 8.95 amps. So we are under amp right now. And I bet you, what happens if I go to a lower fan setting here? Keep the compressor on. It's basically the same thing. Okay, sure. So the fan serves almost no difference here. But actually, what we'll do, I want to turn this off. Yeah, sure, we'll turn it off. There we go. I'm gonna turn just the fan on. The fan serves about two amps power. One amp power, so either way, we are under a fairly generous load. The inlet air is the same as the inlet air on the evaporator. Um, there's no restrictions, I just cleaned it. So now we have a baseline of what we're looking at. I'm going to button this up and we're going to take it back inside and I'll show you what my plan is. All right, and we're back together again. 
and it has this fancy grill on the back. So what is the plan? Well, now we are going to take this massive an air conditioner. And stuff it into this. Here is the big plan. So, dryer hoses. I don't have an insert here, so they're just kind of held into the window frame by now and blanketed around. One of these is going to be our inlet. I'm just gonna pull in air from here. This baffle here will make sure it doesn't just immediately exit out again, but it should pull into this side and our fan will take it in. It'll do its cooling on the condenser and come out again. And it should be able to then blow back out the other line here, back outside, exactly like an air conditioner should. I have a theory, however, and that is my hoses are too small. This is the biggest dryer hose you could get at the Home Depot. And even this was like $16 for 10 feet. And there's two 10 foot lengths here. Uh, I would have loved eight inch. I think eight inch is more appropriate, but six inch is all we could get. So my, my guess here is, before we put this together, uh, it will work. Like we're gonna be able to bring in um, outdoor air It'll do its thing, it'll leave again, but we're not either, either we're not gonna be able to pull enough air in or seeing how we're using this as a number. We have two grills worth of inlet and three grills worth of outlet. We're not gonna be able to remove enough hot air from this. So, what does that mean? Uh, the higher the condenser temperature um, the less heat that's rejected, the higher the head pressure, which means the higher the compressor amps. The fan's gonna be relatively static in its current consumption, but I have a feeling if this is insufficient, we're gonna see a higher current draw on the compressor and overall a higher current draw on the entire AC, and it's not going to cool air as much. It may work, but just not as good. But we already got those baseline temperatures, so we're gonna try it again. So I'm gonna put the camera down and I'm gonna stuff this into the cabinet. I'm sure Bob Vila would be proud of my woodwork here. Uh, I mean, it's a bit of a loose fit on top there. I'm expecting to put weather stripping on here. I can't find the weather stripping, so I'm just gonna pack it with rags. But side to side, it's a nice tight fit. You can only go so far in because I've added these two blocks of wood which butt up against the back of the air conditioner without blocking our grills here. And that means it goes up to about here on the unit. The rest of it just kind of hangs out in the back side. Really, I should have made this platform here a lot bigger to just support the entire AC. Um, but I'm just gonna use a piece of wood here. You know, instead of trying to duct tape this too much, I'm gonna use these giant six inch clamps so I can actually adjust this more. This, this stuff, Dinks. This is brand new and it just smells like chemicals. It's still off-gassing. Um, there's a reason why I had to seal that there because I got a feeling that once I start pulling in th air in through there, it's just going to off-gas and blow everywhere. Plus, you know, it wouldn't be all that efficient. All right, so let's get this thing spun around. Okay, and here we go. Now, I haven't brought down the lights just simply because I wanted to bring it to an intimate moment here. No, to use these air conditioner rated extension cords they're like two meters long um, and okay it's dubious to call them air conditioner rated they're the same gauge anyways take everything off the circuit so we're just going to be running the ac on here that way i don't burn the house down everything is installed everything is hosed in everything is arranged uh, i assume one of these hoses are going to fall down once it begins to warm up but let's go low temperature and away we go. Now I have to wait for this thing to uh, run for a bit and we'll do our tests again. And after 15 minutes, our outgoing air temperature here is about 12 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna see if I can pop this off with one hand. We'll grab our imaging camera. So, we are twelve degrees over here, eleven degrees, seven, 
Same thing on this side here as well. All right, and our intake air is 33, 34, and our outlet air. It's hot. There, 53, 54. Man, this thing must be just on fire. Oh, oh yeah, you can see it. Yeah. It's warm. I can see it. It's such a day and night thing. You can see there's two hoses right here. And yet on this... Yeah, it's hot coming out. Alright, you know what I wonder? Let's see here. Yeah, that's about what I expected from these damn extension cords. Okay, I'm going to take the camera down for a moment here so I can dismantle the controls and we'll amp clamp this as well. Alright, amp clamp is ready. So we were, what, 8.9 amps before? 10 amps now. So, we are now over amping. Interesting. And is that just the compressor? I think it's just this one here, if I can reach it. 8.4. Yeah, the compressor is now working way harder than it was before. So my plan was about 70% successful. I have been able to make this air conditioner work inside the house using this enclosure and these sets of hoses, but it's running inefficiently. If anything, I would say you're more or less damaging the air conditioner because now the compressor has to work harder, things have to run hotter, and we're not getting as much cold air out of this thing as we would be, well, even if it was just sitting outside. So, there's that. Now, why do I want to do this? I mean, I can always get a smaller window air conditioner. Not that it's going to matter. Like I said, we're getting central air anyways. Uh, well, I've seen a few people ask this question before. Like, can I take a window air conditioner and make it into a portable air conditioner? And my final word on that is, as long as you can get your air ducting to be sufficient for how much heat it's going to be throwing out of the air conditioner and trying to blow outside, yes, you can make this work. Um, that being said, um, Technology Connections has already made a, mo uh, a video to point out that having just one line and using the cool air in the room to kind of help cool off the air conditioner is a bad idea. Um, go watch his video. Uh, it better explains on what's going on here. Uh, I'm just gonna have to refine this a little bit more, but other than that, it looks a little bit ridiculous. It smells like chemicals in here, and I hope you enjoyed watching this. And until next time, have a good one.